Hi, Bob the Canadian here. Welcome to this English lesson where I'm going to talk about a few really little things. I'm going to talk about some tiny things. Uh, and not only will I tell you what it is, um, but I'm also going to teach you a few English phrases or a few English idioms that use the name of that tiny thing. Hey, welcome to this English lesson about tiny, tiny things. Before we get started though, if you are new here, please click that red subscribe button below and give me a thumbs up if this video helps you learn just a little bit more English. One of the first small things I wanted to talk about is the dot on an I. Um, you can see here that this dot is rather large because I printed out the word it uh, in a really, really large font. But one really tiny thing is the dot on the letter I. And this reminded me of an English phrase to dot your I's and to cross your T's. Notice there's a T here as well. So this I has a dot and this T is crossed. When we say that someone dots their I's and crosses their T's, it means that they've done a job thoroughly and completely and that they've done the job well. We say that they did the job so well that they dotted all their I's and they crossed all their T's. So this is the salt shaker from my kitchen. In English, we call this a salt shaker. And you can see there's little holes in the top. And if I shake it, then some salt will come out onto my hand. These are called grains of salt and they are really, really tiny. Um, and they make food taste really good. Um, but there's three phrases I wanted to talk about that have the word salt in them. I'll just put this salt down here. The first is if you describe someone as being the salt of the earth, it means that they are just a really honest, hardworking person. I would describe my grandparents when they were alive as being the salt of the earth. They were people who worked hard and they were honest in all their dealings with people. The second phrase I wanted to teach you with the word salt in it is the word is the phrase to rub salt in someone's wounds. If you have something bad happen to you in life, um, maybe you have a car accident and then your friend keeps talking about the car accident, we would say that he is rubbing salt in your wounds because the car accident was already a bad thing and you feel bad because your car is wrecked but now your friend keeps talking about it so we would refer to that as rubbing salt in your wounds. It is not a very nice thing to do. The last phrase I want to teach you with the word salt in it is to take something with a grain of salt. So if someone tells you something and you are a little bit skeptical, you don't really believe them right away, uh, we would say that you are taking what they say with a grain of salt. In English, when you take something with a grain of salt, it means you don't believe it right away, but you take a little bit of time to think about it to make sure that it is true information. So this is a Canadian penny. It is our one cent coin. Uh, and it actually has a maple leaf on one side and then on the other side, hopefully this focuses, you can see that it has Queen Elizabeth. So uh, a penny is worth one cent. Here is a cool fact. We don't actually use pennies in Canada anymore. Um, you can use them if you want, but when you're at the store, everything always rounds off to the closest five cent mark now. Anyways, a couple phrases with the word penny in it. The one is you can say to someone a penny for your thoughts. So let's say you are with a friend and they are not very talkative. You could say to them, hey, penny for your thoughts. And basically what that means is, hey, um, can you just tell me what you're thinking about? I'll jokingly give you some money. I'll give you a penny if you tell me what you're thinking about. So if someone is sitting and not talking much and you think they have something cool to say, you can say to them, hey, penny for your thoughts. And basically you're just welcoming them uh, to uh, kind of talk about what they are thinking about. The second phrase with the word penny in it is the phrase, a penny saved is a penny earned. And what this phrase means in English, and it would mean the same in any language, is that if you don't spend money, it is almost the same as making money. So if you have a penny and the weekend comes and you don't spend the penny, or maybe you're talking more like $10, if you don't spend it, 
it's almost the same as if you have earned an extra penny. So a penny saved is a penny earned basically means if you don't spend your money, it's a lot like making extra money. It's not exactly the same thing, but I think you get the point. So this is my wedding ring. Um, the wedding ring, by the way, goes on the ring finger. Um, oh, if you didn't know the names of the fingers in English, I'll tell you. This is your thumb. This is your index finger. This is your middle finger, which is a bad thing if you turn this way and only show this finger. That's a bad thing in English. This is your middle finger. This is your ring finger. And this is your pinky or pinky finger. By the way, uh, a ring is a very tiny thing. Uh, and your pinky finger is also a very small thing. Um, there's two uh, phrases I want to teach you with the word ring in it. They don't have to do exactly with a wedding ring. Um, but the first phrase I wanted to teach you is to give someone a ring. So if you hear that someone has given someone a ring, it usually means that they are engaged to be married. So if I uh, think about when I was a much younger Bob the Canadian, there was a time when I gave Jen a ring. I asked Jen to marry me and I gave her a ring. But you know, the same phrase to give someone a ring means something else as well. I could say that the other day I gave Jen a ring, which means that I gave her a phone call. So the phrase to give someone a ring can mean that two people got engaged, that one of the couple gave the other one a ring and they are now engaged to be married. Or if you say the other day I gave someone a ring, it means that you gave them a phone call. So this is a pin. In English, we call this a pin. And we use this uh, to hang things sometimes on the wall. So if you had a piece of paper that you wanted to put on the wall, you might put a pin in it to hold it on the wall. Um, we also use pins sometimes when we are sewing or tailoring clothes, um, but this is a pin. And the phrase I wanted to teach you with the word pin in it is, sometimes it's so quiet that you can hear a pin drop. I'm not sure you heard that. I was trying to be quiet while I did it. So if you are somewhere where it's really, really quiet, uh, you could say to the person you are with, it's so quiet in here, you could hear a pin drop, um, which basically is just a way of describing how quiet a place is. So do you want to have another look at this pin? Let me see if I can get it in focus. It's a really cute pin with a really nice pink head on it. So this is a seed. It is a very tiny thing that nature produces. Uh, when a plant reproduces, uh, it makes seeds. And if you plant the seed in the ground, it will grow uh, into another version of the same plant. Uh, and there is one phrase, English phrase, that I wanted to teach you about seeds, and that's to plant a seed, which I know you think means to put a seed in the ground. But did you know that you can also plant a seed in someone's mind, it means that you are giving them an idea. So let's say I really wanted to get a raise at work. I could plant the seed in my boss's mind by just mentioning that other people who do the same job as me make a lot more money. So when you plant a seed, it means that you literally take a seed and put it in the ground, but it can also mean that you are giving someone an idea. So hair is another very, very tiny thing. And you can see that I got a haircut this past weekend. Many of you said it looked really good. So thank you uh, for saying that in the last live English lesson. There are three phrases that I want to talk about that involve hair. And the first is what we call a bad hair day. I will not have any bad hair days for the next couple of weeks because my hair is so short, it just looks the same all the time. But sometimes, you go out and your hair gets blown around by the wind uh, and it just doesn't look good. And we would describe that as a bad hair day. The second phrase I wanted to teach you with the word hair in it is the phrase, get out of my hair or to ask someone to get out of your hair. If someone is bothering you while you're doing a job, you can say to them, hey, just get out of my hair. I'm trying to do something here. This happens to me sometimes in the kitchen when I am making supper. Sometimes the kids are all in the kitchen with me trying to get a snack or trying to get a drink. And I'll just say, hey, can you guys get out of my hair for a little bit? I need space. I need the room to make supper for you. So please get out of my hair.
The third phrase I wanted to teach you with the word hair in it is to let your hair down. In English, when you let your hair down, it means that you have decided to relax. So if you come home from work and you decide to let your hair down, it simply means that you are going to relax and enjoy yourself for a little while. This is a cookie. If I break the cookie in half, there will be some crumbs. You can see here, I'm not sure if it will focus, but there is a little cookie crumb there. And a crumb is a very tiny thing. And I wanted to teach you a few phrases with the word crumb or cookie in it. Um, the first one is the phrase, that's the way the cookie crumbles. This is a phrase that we say to people when life is just not great uh, or when something doesn't go the way they planned, we will say, that's the way the cookie crumbles. It's basically the same as saying to them, that's life or that's the way it goes sometimes. It's just a little English phrase we say sometimes uh, when someone is having a moment in their life that isn't going well, we'll just say, well, that's the way the cookie crumbles. The second phrase I wanted to teach you with the word cookie in it is the phrase tough cookie. A tough cookie is a, a way we describe someone who is physically strong and emotionally strong. So if you know someone uh, who is just physically strong and emotionally strong, we would say that they are a tough cookie. My mom is a tough cookie. She is a physically strong person but she's also very emotionally strong. When things go wrong in life, she is not someone to get overly emotional about it. She is very physically strong and very emotionally strong. She is a tough cookie. And the last phrase I wanted to teach you with the word cookie in it is to get caught with your hand in the cookie jar. This simply means that you get caught doing something that you probably weren't supposed to be doing, while you were doing it. So you didn't get caught afterwards, you got caught while you were doing it. You got caught with your hand in the cookie jar. Well, hey, thank you for watching this little English lesson about tiny things. Uh, and I hope you were able to learn some cool new English phrases while you were watching. Uh, if you're new here, don't forget to click that red subscribe button below and give me a thumbs up if this video helped you learn just a little bit more English. And while you're here, why don't you stick around and watch another English lesson.